Um, so today we're going to discuss the um, if you are producing enough progesterone or not. So we're going to break it down into three parts. The first one is understanding if you are producing enough, if you're not producing enough, and what to do if you have identified that, that your progesterone level is normally pretty low. So first of all, how would you know if there is enough progesterone running in your body? So the first step is having regular cycles. So if you notice that you have regular cycles that are somewhere between 26 to 27 to 35 days, chances are that you have enough progesterone um, to to continue uh, an abundant normal cycle that allow you to bleed every single month. On top of that, how would you know if you have enough progesterone? Um, one is if you have already carried a pregnancy to, uh, to the end of the term without any problems. And if you have never been pregnant before, it's simply uh, enough to really check your ovulation and your basal body temperature. So if you find out that every single month that you, you ovulate, more or less like clockwork, and if you notice that there is a temperature spike after ovulation, chances are that your progesterone level, it's um, endogenous, your endogenous progesterone is uh, it's growing and uh, it's pretty enough. Now, let's move on and let's find out how you can identify if you're running low in progesterone. Well, step number one, you have in regular periods and possibly you have already ticked that one off. Otherwise, you wouldn't be uh, watching this video. The second one is that you have a short luteal phase. So I've met women that um, ovulated, let's say on day 20, 22, or sometimes even day 25, 28, and they got their period back even, and they got their period after four, six, seven days. So that's a sign to me that progesterone is not enough and the body isn't capable to producing enough progesterone for a variety of reasons. And we're gonna go into that later on in this video. But if you are experiencing short luteal phases, which is anything uh, below 10 days after ovulation, once again, chances are that your progesterone level um, is still suboptimal. Something else that could really tell you if you have enough progesterone is uh, conceiving. If you have been experiencing difficulties in conceiving, even if everything else is kind of fine, that could be another sign that you don't have enough progesterone to, to build a very thick lining around, uh, around the embryo so it can implant and grow and it's, um, and it's safe in there. Also getting multiple early miscarriages could be another uh, another sign that your progesterone is still quite low. But then there are other few things that you may have not really think about. So one is mood swings. So for example, if you feel very irritable, anxious, depressed, uh, you, you get angry quite easily, sometimes can also mean that there is a hormonal imbalance and um you may require to do some work in restoring that balance between estrogen and progesterone. Another thing is getting a period, but getting light periods. Normally when women get light period, they only think, okay, I don't have enough estrogen, but sometimes the combination between estrogen and progesterone, um, not sometimes, always, it's fundamental to create abundant and regular cycle. And also on the same token, if you do have periods which are not super light and they can also be quite heavy, but they are pretty watery, so the, they get really absorbed by the, by the pads, that's another sign that you don't have, you're not producing enough progesterone. And why is that? Because normally progesterone is the beautiful hormones that allow us to create a very thick lining. And if you have a small period or if you have watery periods, it means that um, the lining didn't grow thick enough and you didn't have much to shed. And something that we are looking to create just before trying to have a baby and to get pregnant is to have that triple layer endometrium, which is the healthiest endometrium that you can get just before having a period or when trying to conceive. You may not know that our endometrial lining has a four, uh, three different stages. So there is the stage zero, stage one, stage two, and three. 
And so that the stage three is when um, the endometrial lining present with that beautiful triple layer that it's perfect for conception um, and can really allow an embryo to thrive in that space. So not having that triple layer is normally the cause of watery periods, light periods, um, and sometimes also short luteal phases and missing periods. And then last but not least, you could identify a low progesterone, progesterone level if you look at your mucosa. So uh, if, you, if your eyes are normally pretty dry, if your mouth is pretty dry, if your skin um, is normally on the drier, uh, drier end, except if it's for winter and you have not moisturized, these are all signs that you may be low in a, in a few hormones. Obviously, there are many other things that can come to play, especially when it comes to dry, dry mucosa, dry skin, dry eyes, and also dandruff on the scalp. And just to mention uh, one, for example, is a thyroid, um, but we're not going down that rabbit hole for the time being. So by now, you have identified how you could tell if you have enough progesterone, if you're producing enough progesterone, or if you don't. Obviously, the quickest way for you to know if you're producing enough of it is also to get a blood work done. Normally, progesterone needs to get tested between day 20, 21 and 22 of the cycle, which is why it's quite difficult to check if you have been experiencing hypothalamic amenorrhea for a long time. But if you're at a if you're at a great place in recovery and uh, you have been ovulating, then maybe you can also decide to test your progesterone level five days after ovulation just to see if it has increased naturally. If uh, you find out that progesterone is not increasing and you're still wondering, what can I do to really... Um, extend my luteal phase and to make sure that I take care of my body appropriately, I would like to mention just three things uh, today. So the first one is to make sure that you prioritize rest and relaxation. There is nothing like rest and relaxation to make sure that you get a, that progesterone really gets a good boost because normally between ovulation and menstruation, that's a time where our body needs the extra calories and the extra rest. So by implementing that into your lifestyle consistently, you will get results within a very short amount of time. And when I say short amount of time is anywhere between two to six months, which is relatively a very short amount of time because our body is very resilient and very quick at catching up with changes. Um, the second thing that you can do is to make sure that you eat fertile foods um, that are normally that are helping the productions of our own blood and that they are quite warming. So for example, I'm talking about stews, or soups, or bone broth, uh, chicken broth as well, but also beetroot. Beetroot is a fantastic, fantastic vegetables that you can definitely introduce into your diet. Uh, barley greens in, is another one. So there are a few of them and obviously um, organic organic liver, for example, organic eggs, pasteurized beef, making sure that you have enough iron is also very important uh, during the luteal phase and during menstruation, because that's a time where a woman lose um, some of the iron, iron reserves. And uh, there was something else that I wanted to say, and it just slipped off my mind. It's going to come back later. And if it doesn't come back, that's all right, because I'm going to share it in another video in the future. But so we have touched upon uh, rest and relaxation, then definitely fertile foods. There we go. It just came back. Also make sure to have enough carbohydrates because carbohydrates that are a very quick source of energy. And as I just mentioned before, you need an extra amount of uh, calories just before getting your period when progesterone is growing. So we have discussed rest and relaxation, fertile foods, and then last but not least, also supplements could be very beneficial uh, when trying to extend the luteal phase. We all know about vitamin C and zinc, but also sometimes, uh, depending on the person, also B6, uh, magnesium, and a variety of B supplements could also be extremely useful. 
I haven't really discussed uh, the movement piece until now. But if you're really serious about growing that triple layer, the triple endometrium layer, always a reminder that cardio is not your best friend if you haven't had a period for a long time or if your periods are super irregular, not because of PCOS, but because of um, restriction and disorder behaviors around training. So always make sure that you, you don't cheat yourself. Just look at your training routine, look at what you're doing and see how you can modify it. Obviously, strength training is very welcome. Pilates as well, yoga as well. But there is one thing as doing yoga and Pilates and strength training. And another uh, thing is taking them to the extreme. So once again, just make sure that you're honest with yourself and that you're doing Doing the things that can actually support your body um, and that can help you to get the period back uh, once and for all. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video today and that you have learned something new. If you did, just please let me know below and just uh, simply say, yes, I learned something. I always love your comments. I love to hear from you. And if you are fully committed to getting your period back within the next three months i just would like to let you know that we have two spots left on the period comeback protocol starting in august so it's only uh, a week and a half away so just make sure that you take advantage of this time to to book a, a discovery call with me where we're gonna really get clarity on what is going on in your situation and how we can support you to reach your goals. So if you're called to do so, uh, just a reminder that we are taking uh, the free calls this week and then our period comeback protocol is gonna be closed for another few months. So sending you so much love and I'm looking forward to, to hearing from you. Bye for now. <laughs>